The 6.5 is on the road here in San Jose. We are at AMD's Advancing AI event. Daniel, it's been a great event. A lot of AI, pretty much everything. Yeah, I mean, it was a big moment. We knew each year, you know, the, the world comes to this. And if you just kind of look at the energy online, you look at the coverage in the media, a lot of people are paying attention. This AI is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity when you get to numbers that big and you get to things that are going to actually change the world, the way we work, the way we live, the way we shop, uh, it gets a lot of eyeballs. So it's been a great day. Yeah, that's right. And strategically, you know, one of the first thing Lisa does when she gets up on stage, which I really appreciate, is she sets the strategic uh, context. And it's AI uh, from the data center uh, to the data center edge to the client and pretty much everything in between. And I can't imagine a better guy to talk about AI on the edge than Jack Hewn. Welcome back to the 6.5, Jack. Yeah, thank you, pal. Always good to see you. Yeah, you good too, to man. You You've guys. been... Jack, thank you. We've been seeing you on stages around the world. A little know. bit. Yeah, it's been, <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been crazy. You know, today was a day, Jack. It was very data center centric. That's right. Here at Advancing AI. Mm -hmm. But over the last few weeks, the, you know, the news payload, that's our new word, exactly. has been palpable for AMD. You mm -hmm. had Computex, that's you had right. a big Threadripper moment. Mm -hmm. So let's just kind of start there. I mean, at Computex, you announced a bunch of powerful new CPUs, right. AI GPUs mm -hmm. designed for creators, mm -hmm. small scale model training. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of see local AI computing evolving alongside the cloud, which we spent a lot of time talking about today? That's right. So we see a world where AI is powered by the data center for the most powerful complex models, but also works seamlessly with the endpoint, right? Yeah. For small, medium models. And one of the things I've always said was think big by going small, right? So the small endpoint devices is very critical because there's models that are 1 billion parameter, 7 billion parameter, that runs very, very well um, on a PC. Yeah. And there's also concerns on privacy, latency, security, and running that capability on your PC is it's just going to be another um, um, hybrid model, right? And you know, we demonstrated at Computex, you can now do um, voice live to um, live voice to voice translation. Uh, you guys should watch it. It was a, we uh, we had someone uh, speaking Chinese live at Computex, wow. and uh, it translated to English um, real time. Uh, which is really cool. And one of the things I love about that is, you know, with that type of capability, you can actually bridge languages, which bridges cultures, use AI Connect the World. We also had a demo that allows you to run, um, a radiologist can use um, an AI model on our AMD AI PC. You could analyze MRIs, right, give suggestions. And instead of a doctor spending tens or hundreds of hours, you know, they can actually look at all the history Give recommendations. So I thought that was really cool, especially in healthcare. And then, and then you're also now seeing um, in the consumer space. Obviously, Copilot Plus is out there. You know, you have not clicked to do, um, but all these developers are driving their own models, right? And as DeepSeek has proven, yeah. small, efficient models can actually run brilliantly, right? On um, you know, GPUs and even endpoint devices, right? So we see it as a very complementary piece from the data center to the uh, AI PC. Yeah, so Jack, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, I talk to CIOs, mm -hmm. right, they, they like the flexibility to have a set of models that they can deploy wherever they want, mm -hmm. right? Some of them, they're gonna be in the uh, data center. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are gonna be uh, in the, in the industrial edge, mm -hmm. and others are going to be on, on the PC. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it might change, mm -hmm. right? What what might be look like a large model today that runs in the data center might run on a PC tomorrow. And uh, with the performance that you know you're putting with Ryzen mm -hmm. AI, you have the most NPU tops. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, out there, a very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're driving. Uh, enabling developers to create new experiences. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of chicken or the egg conversation in the industry right now, mm -hmm. and want to get an update. What are some of these applications? You know, you you rattle off a few from mm -hmm. Computex. Mm -hmm. Any other ones that you see that 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 maybe people uh, that exist or you see in development that maybe maybe people might not be aware of? That's right. So the way, the way I think about the experience that we're enabling is in three categories. One is customization. Second, autom automation, and then deep reasoning. 
So customization on a PC is you want that PC to recognize how you're using and just intuitively see what you're doing, right? I think that was one of the visions of Total Recall. Um, and then automation, there's still a lot of mundane tasks like search. Sure. Right. I mean, semantic search. There should be a way that you could search on your PC very, very quickly, intuitively, or even as you're chatting with a friend. You say, "Hey, I was just on um, vacation in San Diego." Then it'll pick, post up your pictures automatically for you to just send, right? Um, and then deep reasoning. Um, we see a huge trend there that it could help enterprise businesses, especially sales training. Yeah. Right. Where it brings up best practices. Right. Hey, this is this is the value prop. This is how you sell your product. Hey, these are a list of customers. You haven't contacted them in two weeks. Contact. Oh, here are the metrics. So I think all the analytics um, we just seen the very beginning um, of AI PC, and then with Strix Halo, which is our Ryzen AI Max, it can actually run a seventy billion parameter model, hmm. which is pretty incredible. And that's because of the one hundred twenty eight gig of unified memory. Between CPU and GPU, um, it's, fa it's actually faster than the Apple um, N4 Pro. So that type of capability that we're enabling, we're actually at the very beginning of this journey, right? And I, I still feel like there's so much more yeah. that's left to be um, imagined, and uh, we're just at the very beginning of this. Yeah, I mean, we just got we just got a, an operating system mm -hmm. that you know is, is out there, and the new Windows features have just been been turned on. And some of these agentic frameworks, that mm -hmm. a lot of big announcements at Build, mm -hmm. same week as Computex, mm -hmm. you know, using Edge, uh, for instance, mm -hmm. and being able to create your own agent to do mm -hmm. to do things on your on your PC is is pretty extraordinary. So it is we're definitely it is. we're definitely at the beginning. Definitely, I mean, I see it as a way that we gotta get these agents where you use it every day, like ChatGPT. Sure, right, where it's not just niche. And uh, the key is having these agents self-learn. So you can see agents in the healthcare space, like with the radiologist um, example, or even in the enterprise where you're just sifting through just so much analytics mm -hmm. right, in the financial space, or even in engineering where we can look at physical design. Can we eliminate white space? Right? Can we automate place and route? So there's many applications of, uh, of AI. And the key now for us is making it very seamless, sure. very intuitive, very easy, very natural to use. And I think we've shown the glimpse of the future. Now, how do we do it in a way that people can use it every day? Yeah. Use it in a very simple way. Yeah, there's a lot mm -hmm. of opportunity there. I, I, when he made the comment about the, you know, the, the Mac, uh, compared to the M4, I almost wanted to ask him if they had liquid glass. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, what, what, what you know. I mean, while you're over here doing AI stuff, yes, yeah, yes, you know, yes. they're over there wagging anyway. So I'll leave it alone. I can't help myself. Yes, um, yes. But you also are you. You're very focused on this price performance on the you know GPU side. That's right. Well. So mm -hmm. you launched the 9060 mm -hmm. XT, mm -hmm. best of best in class performance at what under three hundred fifty dollars. Um, you know the 9070, mm -hmm. which also is priced very effectively. It mm -hmm. seems that you've you're going after it right now. You're That's basically right. saying we think we can deliver the yeah. performance, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. can also challenge the market on price because it's a little more sensitive, right? These mm -hmm. are this is consumer. Um, how do you kind of keep going after this? We don't want it to be a race to the bottom, Correct. right? Correct. You got to be making margin. The street mm -hmm. wants you making margin. Mm -hmm. You want to still be seen as premium, mm -hmm. but it seems like you're finding that balance. How do you keep that going over the next year or two? Yeah, I mean, part of our mission is to enable the best graphic game, gaming performance, but broadly accessibility, because we want, we want to enable as many people to touch our technology. Possibly, you got winner developers, and we want to be as aggressive as possible at these price points out the gate. I think it's very important, but it's not just pricing. Because those price, we would have done it many years ago. The key for the 9070 XT and the 96 XT that we just um, um, launched, actually just last week on shelf, is we focus heavily on software. Right? If you look at our quality of service, day one drivers, super stable. So what I tell my team is quality is just as important as performance. Actually, maybe more important than yeah. performance because we want a seamless out-of-box experience. Um, that's one of the reasons why the 970 is doing so well, because it just works, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's not these unstable drivers that we see the competition currently have. But more importantly, we enabled FSR4, which was our first machine learning based um, uh, model for super resolution. I think we surprised a lot of people. Um, in one generation, we've actually have exceeded NVIDIA's DLSS CNN model, and we're right behind the Transformer model. 
then we also announced um, FSR Redstone, which is the next step in FSR. So we're going to bring um, neural radiance caching, machine learning um, based uh, ray regeneration, machine learning based frame generation. That's going to come the second half of this year, which will then further improve the experience of all RDA4 um, users. That includes the 97 XT as well as the 960 XT. So I think it's that full package of offering great software, right? Day zero drivers, the best performance per dollar, and then enabling a broad ecosystem so we win the studios and developers. I think that's what makes this product so exciting. And we could continue this, right? Because it's not just price. It's everything else that we're doing and having that roadmap for our users um, to show that you, you can actually have a great, great product. And we're sold out in the 97 XT. Yeah. The more we build, the more we're selling out instantaneously, which is, um, and we haven't had this type of GP launch in probably over 10 years, Pat. It's been a, it's yeah, been a, it's been a minute. And you know, it's interesting, yes. Jack, uh, when you started kind of laying the cookie crumbs for mm -hmm. what your strategy was going to be before you launched the card, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, here we go. Like, um, you know, wondering what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's, um, uh, let's really knock it out of the park mm -hmm. uh, in a mid-range card. Mm -hmm. um, and then you came out and you just crushed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't seen lines like this uh, in a long time for AMD graphics cards. And then, and then it was, well, okay, how many can they make, mm -hmm. right? Are they limiting this? You can barely get a hold of this. And saw a lot of volume coming in. Now, ultimately, when you get a screaming card, you're going to get into the stock out situation. Mm -hmm. But hopefully you're, you know... Uh, your partners are working hard to, we are. to fill uh, to fill this back up, mm -hmm. where, where you can make it you know good business for you and a good mm -hmm. experience for, for for gamers too. Yeah, we're working very hard on a supply chain. I mean, that one, the 97 XT sold more than 10x yeah. um, than any other previous uh, generation uh, GPU. So it, it's been phenomenal. Yeah, uh, it's probably exceeded all expectations. Uh, we're super happy with the product and launch. Then FSR, when we first launched the 97 XT, we had 30 titles. Then Computex, we said we'll have over 60. Right. Right. So we're quickly ramping um, in the game studios. But more importantly, the developers are excited about RDA4. Right. I mean, they want to implement FSR4 as fast as possible because they see the value that we bring. And now FSR Redstone. We're taking another, I think people are very surprised that, wow, the pace of innovation sure. is going to be that fast. That's right? right. So you could buy 97 XT or 96 XT and know that Redstone is coming in the second half of this year. Yeah. Uh, I want to pivot to um, commercial PC. Mm -hmm. So overall, uh, AMD is gaining market share mm -hmm. in, in the PC market. And I, I think under your leadership came in and really started to make a difference in the commercial uh, PC segment. First, it was Dell, mm -hmm. right? You and Sam on stage, mm -hmm. hu hugging each other, and, <laughs> yes. you know, him on your stage, mm -hmm. uh, saying some very nice things. Mm -hmm. And AMD that's, people hugging people named Sam. Oh, how about that? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Imagine that. Yeah, that's good, Dan. Uh, you're Just good for one, one of those. One a day. Yeah. yeah, I think you've had three today. So <laughs> banger. Yeah, but uh, and then you went to Computex mm -hmm. and did an announcement with uh, ASUS. Correct. ASUS commercial. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk about the market a little and maybe your aspirations mm -hmm. of, of what are you trying to do uh, in the market. And quite frankly, you know, we had this conversation over dinner once. Yes. How, how are you going to gain more share? Sure, sure. So we're very underrepresented in uh, commercial enterprise given the strength of our product portfolio. And look, we've always had great products, right? Great performance, um, multi core. But the next step of enterprise is not just raw performance, it's manageability, yeah. it's security, it's stable image, is um, transitioning a fleet from vPro to AMD Pro. And the, when, I looked at, when I first looked at the strategies, we gotta make sure we have the portfolio and the design wins, right? So I thought um, winning Dell was great. We've also added desktop to our portfolio, both HP and Lenovo, because yeah. to complete, the, it's not just notebooks, also desktops. And, and Pat knows I love desktops. Um, and then now ASUS has um, added um, a fleet of commercial notebooks and desktops to AMD too. So for me, we now have the portfolio, right? So the next step is, okay, how do we transition the fleet to AMD? And I'm spending a lot of my time with enterprise accounts personally. So our customers' customers. Right. Right, and what I've learned is it's not just performance, right? Is 
the stability, um, the manageability, the security. You know, how do they trust AMD in the next five to 10 years? Um, and we're winning business. We, we brought on um, many, many new accounts. We can absolutely do it. Um, sometimes they just don't know, right? And also the battery life is phenomenal too. Sure. So we got great performance, great battery life, great energy efficiency. We now have AMD Pro, uh, which has all the features of uh, remote man uh, manageability, security. It's just not telling that story to the enterprise and winning these accounts. And then more importantly, having testimonials. We need hundreds of these testimonials, right. not, just, not just a handful. But we're gaining share and commercial. It's my number one priority is enterprise right now. It's probably where I'm spending half my time. Yeah, are you uh, seeing some lift, for instance, uh, very competitive mm -hmm. uh, enterprise uh, data center chip called Epic. Yes. Uh, are you seeing any correlation between an Epic customer and, and a Ryzen Pro customer? Definitely. So if you're using Epic, it makes perfect sense to use a Ryzen Pro. Yeah, I think what it says right. is AMD is strategic. That's and right. If you're, if you're, you trust us for strategic data center, you can trust us for strategic cloud. You got to pass. So yeah. we proved we can actually deploy at scale with Epic. Yeah. Right. And now it's just ramping that motion in uh, in Ryzen. And historically, we did not have the portfolio. We didn't have Dell. We we didn't have the desktops the past few years. We've now corrected that. Now the next step is going to be to go to market. It's going to be sales training. And also, one of my focuses is on the VARs. Yeah. Right, so we have to empower channel. And the channel, right? Um, the insights of the world, the CWs, right. to give them programs, tools, so that we can actually scale that part of the business too. So for me, it's focused on the top 100 accounts. You get the mid market, which is the um, the top 5,000. They have SMB. These guys buy five or 10 PCs. Sure. So we then we got to enable that broad channel so that we build that scale. Um, and look, we're gaining a lot of traction. I think everyone's very excited. But the key is just getting that momentum and that traction, and you're right. seeing us gain share in this space, and you'll see us gain more share yeah. um, in the coming quarter. You only have so much capital in any relationship, yes. so it's always easier to sell the thing the customer actually really wants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's also known as being the best. So anyone that's ever been the salesperson of the inferior product yes. knows you have to be a lot better. You know, there's sure. people that can be very good at selling a product that everybody wants, but it sounds like you're also you know, focused on the partnerships, mm -hmm. you're going deeper, yes. you're getting in front of customers yourself, mm -hmm. which I always appreciate an executive that mm -hmm. goes out there and makes it happen. Never miss a number. It's Correct. one of my things. Correct. And then on top of that, it sounds like you're also getting deeper with partners, deeper with channel. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going to take to win. I think that your connection to Epic is really good. The strength mm -hmm. and the growing power of Instinct yeah. will also help yeah. pull. But, you know, AMD has a very loyal community in, in PC and in client. Um, and so across the board, whether it's the GPU or the AI PCs, it seems like you're making a lot of progress. Jack, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with us. Of course. Only thing we didn't do in this conversation is race our cars. But we, <laughs> we're yeah, do that, that anytime, point. anytime. We'll do that at some point. We have a great um, dinner, race some cars. Let's do, Talk let's watches. race first because, you know, I tell you what, the, <laughs> it, once you've eaten, it's hard to get in that thing and go fast. But uh, let's do it again sometime soon. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, thanks, thanks Jack. Thank you. Of Appreciate course. that. Of course. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here. We are the 6-5. We're on the road here at Advanced. Advancing AI for AMD in beautiful San Jose, California. Check out all the coverage of this event and subscribe and be part of our community. We appreciate you tuning in, but we got to say goodbye for now. We'll see you later.